Hello, my gorgeous ones. Welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia. Here on my channel, I love all things affordable fashion and beauty. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, declutters, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe, stick around, be a friend. All right, you guys, I have 16 palettes that are going to be leaving my collection today. It's always so hard for me to let my palettes go, but at the same time, it also feels very freeing. It feels like a release. It is less overwhelming to me because I already have a giant collection. When I have palettes that are sitting there that I'm not touching, that brings me anxiety. So these, even though it's kind of hard to say goodbye sometimes, I think I'm ready to let these go. So if you want to see what 16 palettes are leaving my collection, keep on watching. All right, you guys, so really the reason why I forced myself to do another declutter is I have brought in quite a few palettes already in 2024 and possibly have some more on the way. There's two pre-orders that I'm kind of wondering where they are, to be honest, but I know I have those coming in. I know that PR will also come in as well. And I've also purchased, I mean, just quite a few on my own. And I've tried to have the rule for myself in the last year and a half or so that I have to let more go than I bring in. That helps keep me kind of accountable and conscious of, all right, if you decide you're going to buy four palettes this month, you have to know you have to let five go. So these are going to be the 16 palettes that honestly, none of these are terrible but that I'm either not using or just the quality doesn't excite me. Maybe the color story doesn't excite me. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first one I have is this palette from Standing O Cosmetics, the um, Stage Fright palette. Now, honestly, I did get this in PR two Halloweens ago, and this is not a bad palette. It's really not. Um... It's very much a Halloween palette to me. I mean, yes, you can wear these tones other times of the year. It's kind of a split half and half Halloween, half fall palette. But even though it's not a bad palette, I look at like my spooked palette from Gora Mongrels. It's also a very half Halloween, half fall, kind of similar color story to this that the quality is better in it. So for that reason, I just, I know I'm not going to reach for this one over that one. So I decided, I kept it through this last Halloween to see if I'd use it. I think I used it one more time and I was like, it's good, but it's just, it's not the level of some of my others. So I'm going to let this one go. The next one I told you guys in a different video that I would be letting this one go. This is the Arcana palette from Shroud. You guys, it's not that this is terrible. It's that this brand has gone AWOL. I talked about it in the other video, but they have disappeared off the face of the earth, off the grid, left so many customers hanging that purchased a palette. Now I think it's going on maybe four, four to five months and no word from the brand no one's got their palettes. They won't respond to anything. So I'm clearly not going to promote the brand. Um, I did actually quite like the mattes in this one. I'd heard from others that their mattes weren't the best in other palettes and that their shimmers were amazing, especially their singles. But I thought the shimmers in here were kind of flat and the mattes were better. So I don't know if it was just this palette, but it doesn't really matter. I cannot support a brand that just takes people's money and never gives them their product. Like I, I hope they're okay, like physically. I hope that the owner is okay. All right, next we have this little double palette from Cara Beauty. I feel, I don't know why I feel bad getting rid of this. Like I just, you guys, I've just outgrown palettes like this. I bought this several years ago and the quality is not bad. Car Beauty actually has pretty nice quality, to be honest, and is very affordable. I got this at TJ Maxx a couple years ago because I was really getting into more color then. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to use this so much. I got it for so cheap. It's going to be so pretty. And I think if I used it, I think I did use it once. Um, and I liked my look. It was pretty, but I've never reached for it since then. So there's just no reason to keep it. 
Next up, this was, uh, I went back and forth and back and forth. Ultimately, I decided to get rid of it. This is the Lash Step is the brand Matte About You. So it is an all matte palette. We did receive this in Ipsy, Boxy Charm by Ipsy, I believe. And I was like, man, do I want to get rid of this? Because it was actually really, really nice quality. And I do like that, hey, it's just like an all matte palette. If I need a matte, I'll go for it. But I was thinking about other palettes that I have that have beautiful buttery mattes in it that I'm more likely to just grab those. Like say Blend Bunny Dollhouse or even my iconic London Booming and Gleaming palette I love that has very similar mattes that are in here. I really love my Sahara and Mirage palette from Alter Ego. Even some of say like my Nomad mattes. I've got a lot of... I, I, I'm like, don't try to justify keeping a palette when you can like achieve whatever it is that you're trying to convince yourself to keep it up in other palettes in the collection. If it goes through my brain that I might possibly should get rid of something, I probably should. So I am going to let this go. It is not a bad palette though. Um, oh, we have another Cara Beauty palette. I forgot. So this is the La Chica uh, Enamorada palette. And I've had this one also in my collection forever. I've never touched it. Um, I just, I'm past, I don't mind still getting really affordable palettes. As a matter of fact, I found one that is beautiful. I have not used it yet. We'll see from TJ Maxx from this random brand Amuse, which I think is even like just like a, a wholesale brand, but it was $5 and it looks stunning. So I'm not opposed to getting these random inexpensive palettes that they perform amazing, but I don't know. There's just, this doesn't really appeal to me anymore at all. All right, next we have this Buxom Beauty Boss Babe palette. And I used to really love this palette. It's still not a bad palette at all. As a matter of fact, I use this comparing it to the Patrick Tom Major Dimension palette um, in a look where it was like, do you know which one is on each eye? Very, very similar look. You can achieve a very similar look with this palette. But I pulled it back out recently and used it. And I don't know, maybe it got a little bit old because I, I remembered it being better than it was this last time. I thought that the shimmer seemed a little bit drier, a little bit less sparkly. And I think I just outgrew this one maybe too, where I used to think it was so, so good. And then I've tried others, you know, other formulas and it's not quite as good as I used to think that it was. But I honestly think the formula in this is better than say like a Too Faced or an Urban Decay. So um, Buxom isn't really known for their eyeshadows, but this was not a bad palette. I just think I've outgrown it. This Ofra Signature Luxe Palette got in BoxyCharm, Ipsy BoxyCharm. I knew I was going to declutter this. Like I, I convinced myself to keep it because I liked it better than I thought I was going to. I have not in the past loved Ofra's eyeshadow formula. Their highlighter is beautiful. I really like their lip formulas, but their eyeshadows are just kind of meh. Um, it does have the Rodeo Drive highlighter in here. So I was trying to convince myself like, all right, just keep it because it performed well. I'm never going to reach this palette again because, you know, if it's neutrals, I've got about 10 other neutral palettes that perform better. Why am I going to keep this? And another mentality I've been trying to get out of is to have just like a palette from a brand so I can talk about it to you guys. I used to think like, okay, I want to be able to have a palette from every single brand so that if someone asks me, how do you like this formula? Or if they want to look or, you know, but I think I'm past that now where I, I'm like, I don't really owe people that. Like I owe myself to really enjoy my collection. And if I don't love this formula, why keep it just to say I have one Ofra palette? So if you do that and it's kind of bothering you that you do that, you don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. All right, next we have three She Glam palettes. So I've really decluttered a lot of my She Glam. Um, I used to have 
I think I had around 20 and now I'm down to just my zodiac sign ones. I don't think I'll declutter those. I say that, but I've gone through and decluttered more and more and more of my chic lamp. So, um, these are not bad. Um, again, I just, I'm not really ordering that much from Sheila anymore or Shein. I used to, I used to order like crazy. I'm talking like four or five years ago, I was a Shein queen and then She Glam, I bought their very first palette they ever came out with. The very first, like when everyone was going crazy over their liquid blushes and all these things I'd had for like a year already. I have not purchased from them now in like a year and a half. I don't really see myself purchasing from them anymore. Not for any moral high ground. I'm not trying to get on my high horse about it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not interested. So this is the Petal Power palette. I kept talking myself into keeping this solely for the color story. I think it's a beautiful color story. I'd actually would love for a brand that I love their formula more to do this color story. Like if Colored Rain had this color story, I would love it. Um, even like a Nomad, I would be so excited about it. Um, but this formula is just okay. It's not great. So I don't need to keep an okay palette. Another one from them is the Love Stoned palette. It's a pretty, I liked this because it's kind of, it's pastel, but then it's kind of like murky swampy too with these greens in here. Um, so it's, I liked that you got some kind of deep and then the pastel, but I was like, all right, girl, you have the Sickly Sweet palette from Blend Bunny which has deeper and then like pastels. Like you've got other palettes that have the same sort of feel. If you're not reaching for it, if the formula is not amazing, don't, don't keep her. This is the Pitch Perfect, no, Pitch Pretty palette from She Glam as well. This was another one that it was color story. I freaking love this color story. Just Man, other brands, like, they do do color story as well at She Glam. I just need some of these other brands that they come out like, oh, say, I've been wanting to try Bella Butte Bar Palette really, really badly. I still have yet to get one because I'm just waiting for that color story. If they had something kind of like this or a mix of this one and the Petal Power Palette. So if they had something kind of like similar to this for spring, but you know, it's that Bella Butte bar formula that everyone raves about, I would hop on in a second. I hope they do something like that. But again, this is just a personal decision that the, the qualities aren't great. Probably not going to buy anything else from She Glam. Don't hold me to that. Something may come out that like blows me away, but for now I'm not. All right. All the rest of these. No, no, no. I've got, no, I've got a couple of others. Okay. Dose of Colors, Sassy Siennas. Surprisingly, I've decluttered all my Dose of Colors now except for two. And I used to really rave about their formula and be like, everyone's overlooking them. I still think that they are good, like really good, but they're not as amazing as some of my others and I'm more likely to reach for the amazing ones over these. This is an all matte palette. I only used it once and I just, I don't know. I, I think these colors are really pretty. These tones, I'm probably just going to reach for other palettes over this. I did declare the Smoky Soiree, Soiree, which was their smoky one that I love smoky eye and smoky tones. But that one didn't perform as well as some of the others. But this, I just knew I wasn't going to reach for it. The other one before I get to those four is, I'm kind of throwing this in there, even though it's not an eyeshadow palette, but it's it's a big face palette. But it's the Spotlight Highlight um, Six Color Palette from BH. Okay. These actually are beautiful. <laughs> These are beautiful highlighters. The pans are huge. I mean... These are big, massive. I've had this for, I want to say, maybe three or four years. So that's kind of one reason I never really reach for it. So I'm going to just let it go. Plus BH, you know, is just in its whatever bankrupt flop era makeup revolution that I don't talk about them as much either. So, but I think 
someone else who doesn't have highlighters or wants a highlighter palette, this is this would be great to pass along to them. Okay, now we're to four from the same brand. And it is ColourPop. You guys, there was a time when I loved ColourPop and I only now will have three ColourPop palettes left. I've decluttered all but the Tinkerbell, the Hocus Pocus palette, and uh, Gather Round Sisters one, and then the Barbie, Malibu Barbie palette. I just, okay, we'll get, I'll, I'll tell you. All right, the Grandeur palette. I wanted this palette for so long. I thought the color story was so, so, so pretty. Um, like as soon as I got into cool tones and I used to not be a cool tone person at all. And then when I was into cool tones, I was like, Oh, I want that palette. Even there was a little bit of warmth in here too. You guys, this was not good. I don't know if I had a dud. I don't know if mine was old. It was not good. Like we are talking flat, 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 dusty shimmers. I was so disappointed. The mats were okay. But I was just so disappointed in this. So that's what I think this is the one that got me going. I thought I loved ColourPop and I started trying some of my other palettes. Some of them have already been in my declutter, so I don't have them here anymore. But it's kind of a common theme that when I go to use these, like this is the Misunderstood palette. I only used it once because I, I, I think I have had this one for quite a while and held on to it because I have too many palettes, so I'm decluttering. I waited so long to use this. I kept thinking it looked gorgeous. I thought the shimmers looked so pretty in here, especially this green and this purple. And they were, again, just okay. They were not great. And then I went to my mega palettes, which I should have never purchased. But we have the Play It Jewel palette. Color story is great. I mean, there's so much you could do with it, but the quality is just not there anymore to me. I mean, I for what you pay for it, like when you get it on sale, I think it makes sense. Like, did I throw away too much money on a palette that was terrible? No, this isn't a terrible palette. I just... I don't know. I'm in an era where like, I want my makeup to be really, really pretty. And I want it to look really nice. I don't want it to look just okay. And to keep a palette that's just okay. And that's why I was just kind of disappointed with this one. And then same thing with It's a Mood. Um, I thought I really loved this one. I used it a couple of times. And then a long time went by and I used it again and was just, I guess my mindset's just changed about what I consider to be high quality and it doesn't have to be expensive. There are some very inexpensive, very high quality palettes. Um, gosh, the Cupid one that came out from Perfusion for Valentine's, I have a, um, a short and I also have a TikTok of that one and an Instagram reel. That palette looks so cheap outside, but the quality of that and the way it performs on the eyes, the way that it looks is, and that palette is like $8. So it doesn't have to be expensive for sure. This, that little palette blows this out of the water quality wise. Again, this was just kind of like, meh, this, it's the shim if the shimmers are just going to be kind of dry, flat, lackluster, I'm, I'm not going to keep the palette. So that is why I'm just, man, what if I one day have no color pop when I used to have so many color pop? That would be crazy. All right, you guys, those are the 16 palettes that I am letting go of my collection. I'm at that point now where even though I still have way too many palettes, we're talking 300 and something, 360, 70, something like that, which sounds crazy. Um, but I have decluttered, if I didn't declutter all the times that I have, I would have over 600 by now. But I am at the point when I'm going through my collection, I feel like it's so good. Like it would be really hard to let some of the ones go that I currently have, but I eventually may have to do that because I don't want to keep just bringing in and grow this astronomical collection that I don't get to use. So you guys will have to just hopefully stay tuned if you're interested in what do people let go? What do they hang on to? You got to keep on watching. You got to say subscribe and see what I declutter in the future. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, have fun shopping.
budget shopping. Bye!